Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. We are very pleased to be able to help the entire community with their online businesses, bringing you the most relevant information about digital marketing and online businesses. We kindly invite you to subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell. On this occasion, we have for you this complete tutorial for beginners about OpenShot, this fantastic video editing tool that many entrepreneurs are talking about. OpenShot Video Editor is a free video editing software that works on Mac, Windows, and Linux. It has some awesome features to help you edit videos quickly and easily, whether you're a complete beginner or more advanced user. Best of all, there's no watermark. So if you're looking for the best video editing software but don't have the budget to splurge on more expensive applications, this open source software is a great option. So today we'll show you exactly how to use OpenShot Video Editor in this complete step-by-step -step tutorial for beginners. Plus, we'll cover some useful OpenShot video editing tips along the way. The process is pretty much the same on Windows and Linux. So feel free to follow along using whichever device you have. Let us give you a special mention, this channel is sponsored by Fiverr. Fiverr is the world's largest website for freelancers, here just by putting in the search box, you will have at your disposal hundreds of experts from all over the world in topics such as online store configuration, web page design, editing and video optimization, or the topic you can think of in the service you need. Do you need Avidio for your company image, business, advertising, or whatever you have in mind? Don't suffer anymore trying to create it yourself, leave it to an expert, Go to Fiverr, from $5 onwards you can find someone to help you with that, seriously when we tell you that it is one of the best tools you will find. In the description of this video, you will find the link that will take you to Fiverr. Let's start by getting familiar with the OpenShot interface. OpenShot interface. Here's a quick rundown of the OpenShot interface. Project files area. Where all your files will be, you can change this to show transitions, effects and emojis. Playback window. This is where you can see everything that you're editing. Playback controls. These allow you to skip back, rewind, play, fast forward and skip forward. Editing timeline. This is where the magic, editing, happens. Top menu bar. Where you can create a new project, open new files, undo, redo, import files and export. Now before we get started with editing, one thing we like to do in OpenShot is change the interface view. To do this, go to view in the top menu bar. Then go to Views and select Advanced View. Once you've enabled Advanced View, the Properties area will always be visible on the left and the effects will always be visible on the right. You can close them by hitting the X button. You can also pick up and resize the different windows. So we like to make the preview window bigger. But you can customize the interface to suit your computer screen. Once you've got the interface sorted, the next step is to set up the project. How to set up a project in OpenShot. At the top of your screen, You'll see the default on a new project is 720p 30 frames per second. Unless those are the settings you're after, you'll need to change it. To do this, go to the Choose Profile icon in the top menu bar. Alternatively, you can go to File and then choose Profile. A pop-up window will appear. You can select the video settings you want in the drop-down menu. For this video, the footage that we've got is HD 1080p at 25fps. Then go ahead and save your project. To do this, go to File and then Save Project. Give the project a name and choose where you want it to be saved. Then press Save. Now that you've set up your project, it's time to import footage. How to import footage? There are a couple of ways you can import footage in OpenShot. Go to the Import Files button in the top menu that looks like a green button. Right-click in the Project Files window and press Import Files drag and drop your footage in the project files window from an explorer or finder window. Using one of those methods, bring in your primary footage, b-roll footage and music. It's always a good idea to place your primary footage on track one. Then you can build up with your b-roll or overlay footage. So click and drag your primary footage to track one on the editing timeline. Now while editing you can zoom in on the timeline using the slider area above the timeline. If you want to zoom out, Stretch the blue slider bar to the right so that you can see the entire footage clip. If you want to zoom in, take it back to the beginning and it'll zoom in on the start of the clip. Another thing we like to turn on is the audio waveforms. To do this, click the drop down arrow in the top left corner of your primary footage clip. Then go to display and press show waveform. 
Then, an open shot analyzes the audio in that clip and will display a visual representation of the audio on screen. This makes it really simple to tell where you might have stopped talking or done a bad take. Then you can easily go through and remove those sections. So now let's go over how to trim down your footage in OpenShot. How to edit in OpenShot. There are a few different ways you can remove footage in OpenShot. Let's say you want to remove a bad take at the very beginning of your footage. Using the two arrows. Move the playback head, the red vertical line on your timeline, to the point where you want the footage to begin. Hover your mouse over the beginning of the clip and you'll notice that the cursor changes to two arrows. Click and drag the beginning of the clip, then release it at the point where the playback head is this is the new starting point of that clip. Click and drag the entire clip to the beginning of the timeline to remove the empty space where the bad footage was. Using the splice tool, click on the clip to make sure it's selected. Align the playback head at the point you want the footage to begin. Press S on the keyboard to splice or split the clip, you'll then have two clips. Select the clip with the bad footage and press delete on the keyboard. If you're using Mac you'll need to press function and delete. You can use the splice tool to remove a chunk of footage in the middle of a clip too. Simply press S on either side of the bad footage and delete the middle section. Then drag the clip to close the gap. Using the razor tool. Select the scissors icon above the timeline. This is the razor tool. Once that's selected, you don't need to select a clip and press S, simply click anywhere you want to make a cut. Make as many cuts as you like, then disable the razor tool by clicking the scissors icon again. Then you can delete any clips and move them around on the timeline. Using Ripple Edit. This tool cuts and deletes a clip in one go. Let's say you want to remove the right side of a clip and leave the left. Align the playback head where the good footage ends. Right click on the clip, go to slice and select keep left side. This will cut the clip and remove all footage on right side of the playback head. Click and drag the clip to close the gap on the timeline. You can use this tool to remove footage on the left side of a clip as well. Simply go to slice and select keep right side. This is our favorite way to remove footage in open shot. It makes it really quick to go through and edit down all your footage. Now that you know all of the tools that are available to you, go through and remove any footage you don't want in your final video using whichever tools suit you. Once you've done that the next step is to add B-roll or overlay footage. How to add B-roll in OpenShot. Click and drag a B-roll footage clip from the project files window onto the layer above the primary footage. Just like with the primary footage, you can use all the same methods and tools to trim this down. You can also pick up B-roll footage clips and move them wherever you want them to be placed along the timeline. Depending on the type of video you're creating, you'll likely want to remove the audio from your B-roll footage. To do this, select the clip and go to the Properties window on the left side. Scroll down to Volume and drag the slider all the way down to zero. Even if you do want to keep the B-roll audio, we recommend muting it for now so that it doesn't interfere with the shaping of your primary content. Now let's add in any titles or text of the video. How to add titles in OpenShot. Go to the start of your project on the editing timeline and zoom in so you have more control over the area. If you're after more advanced titles, you can select animated title and integrate the Blender tool. Then go to title in the top menu. Here you have two options, title and animated title. Under animated title is where you have direct integration with Blender which is a free, open source 3D modeling and animation tool. Once you select title, a pop-up window will appear with all the different text templates. This is quite advanced, so for this tutorial, we'll stick with a basic title. Select title and a pop-up window will appear with a ton of different text templates. Once you selected a title template, insert the text you want in the line one field. You can change the font, text color, and background color. OpenShot allows you to customize the text, font, text color, background color. You have the option here to use Advanced Editor. This directly links to another free program called Inkscape. This is a great graphic designer tool. If you want more control over your titles, Inkscape will help you achieve that. To use the advanced editor you need to install Inkscape. Pro tip! Our number one go-to tool for animated titles and graphics is Playset. After you've made those adjustments to the text press save, you'll see that in your project files window, there's a new graphic that's been created with the title. Then you can click and drag the title clip down onto the timeline. If you want to adjust the position of the text on screen, simply drag it to the position that you want it. 
You can reposition the text on screen by clicking and dragging it in the preview window. Similarly, if you want to change the position of the text in the video, you can pick up and move the text clip. You can also adjust the length by dragging the sides of the clip. Now go through and add all the text and titles you want in your video. You can edit the text clip on the timeline to adjust the length and change its location. Then the next step is to add any transitions or effects. How to add transitions and effects in OpenShot If you play through the title we just added, you'll notice it suddenly appears and then suddenly disappears. This is an example of somewhere we could add a transition. You can make the title fade in or slide in from one side for example. Doing this is a great way to make your video more polished. Press the Transitions button next to project files to view all the transitions inside OpenShot. To add a transition, go to Transitions in the Project Files window. There are a ton of different options you can choose from. Try not to go overboard with these. Transitions are one of the easiest ways to make your video look cheap and unprofessional. We always stick to the basic ones like a fade or a swipe. Drag the transition onto the text clip and then drag the sides to adjust its length. Once you've chosen a transition, click and drag it down on top of the text clip. You'll see it defaults as being really long. Just adjust it down so it fits at the beginning of the clip. Do the same for the end of the text clip, drag and drop the transition on top and adjust the length. Right-click on the transition at the end of the text clip and select Reverse Transition. Make sure you reverse the second transition or else you the text will fade in twice. Then press play and you'll see the text fades in and then since you've reversed the second one, it will fade out at the end. You can add these transitions to B-roll and primary footage as well. When we're creating a video where all the primary footage shots look similar, we usually won't add a transition between shots. For clips that look very similar, instead of adding a transition we will zoom in on one shot. Instead, we zoom in on one of the clips. This makes it look like there's a second camera angle and is a great way to break up your content. It also helps to cover up any harsh cuts or mistakes. How to add zoom effect To create a zoom effect, select one of the clips and go to the properties area. Under scale you can adjust the size of the clip. The clip defaults to 1.00 which is standard or 100%. To zoom in on the shot, got to scale X and scale Y in the properties window. To zoom in a little bit, change the size to 1.10. This will zoom in 10% on the clip. Make sure you adjust both the X and Y values. So enter 1.10 for Y as well. You also need to make sure the eyes are lined up in both shots. This makes the transition look more seamless. Make sure you position the eyes to line up in both shots. You can do this using the location sliders in the properties window. Or you can go to the preview window.